Chapters 25 through 28 of the Gospel According to Matthew from the New Testament in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. Chapter 25 Then the kingdom of heaven may be likened to ten bridesmaids, who, having received their lamps, went out to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Those who were foolish, taking their lamps, took no oil with them. But the prudent ones took oil in their flasks along with their lamps. While, however, the bridegroom delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight a shout was raised, Now the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. All those maidens thereupon got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish then said to the prudent, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out but the prudent maid reply lest there is not enough for us and for you run rather to the shops and buy for yourselves while however they went to buy the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in to the wedding and the door was shut the other maidens afterwards came calling out sir sir open the door for us but his answer to them was no indeed i tell you that i do not know you therefore keep awake because you know neither the day nor the hour when the son of man will come for it is like a man leaving his home who called together his confidential servants and entrusted them with his effects to one he gave five talents to another two to another one to each in proportion to his abilities and took his departure then the man who had received the five talents went and traded with them and increased them into five talents more and the receiver of the two likewise increased his into two more but the man who had been entrusted with one went and dug a hole in the ground and there hid his master's money now after a long time the master of those servants returned and went through their accounts and the one who had the five talents came bringing five talents beside saying sir you entrusted me with five talents but look i have increased them to five talents more well done you good and faithful servant exclaimed the master in reply you have been faithful over a little so i will entrust you with much share in your master's success then the one who had accepted the two talents said sir you deposited two talents with me but see i have gained with them two talents more very good you useful and trusty servant said his master in reply you have been faithful with a few i will place you over many share in your master's success then the man who had accepted the single talent said knowing you sir to be an avaricious man reaping where you had not sown and raking up where you had not scattered being afraid i went and hid your talent in the ground see here is your own you ungrateful idler said his master in reply to him granted that you knew i reaped where i had not sown and raked up where i had not scattered you ought then to have paid my money into the bankers and on my return i could have got my own with interest now take from him that talent and give it to the man who has the ten talents for to the man who possesses much shall be given and he shall have superabundance but from him who possesses not even what he has shall be taken from him and he flung the good-for-nothing fellow into the darkness without where there is wailing and gnashing of teeth but when the son of man appears in his majesty and all his angels with him then he will take his seat upon the throne of his majesty and collect all nations before himself and will separate them from one another as a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats and the sheep he will place upon his right hand and the goats upon his left the king will then say to those upon his right hand come you approved of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry and you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me a drink i was a stranger and you entertained me naked and you clothed me i was exhausted and you attended me i was in prison and you visited me then the righteous will answer him saying when master did we see you starving and fed you or thirsty and gave you a drink 
when did we see you a stranger and entertained you or naked and clothed you when did we see you sick or in prison and came to you and their king will reply to them i tell you indeed that whenever you did it to one of these my poorest friends you even did it to me then he will say to those upon the left be gone from me you accursed into enduring fire which is prepared for the devil and for his angels for i was starving and you gave me nothing to eat i was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink i was a stranger and you did not entertain me naked and you did not clothe me i was sick and in prison and you did not visit me then they too will answer saying when master did we see you hungry or thirsty or forlorn or naked or sick or in prison and did not help you in reply to them he will then say i tell you indeed that since you never did it to one of the least of these you never did it to me and these he will dismiss into a long correction but the well-doers to an enduring life chapter twenty six now it occurred that when jesus had finished all these discourses he remarked to his disciples do you know that after two days the passover is to be celebrated and that the son of man is now being betrayed to be crucified after this the chief priests the professors and the elders of the people assembled in the court of the high priest who was named caiaphas and consulted among themselves as to whether they could arrest jesus by means of a trick and assassinate him but they said not during the festival for fear a riot should break out among the people when jesus was in bethany at the house of simon the leper a woman who had an alabaster jar of very valuable perfume came and poured it upon his head as he reclined but the disciples on seeing her became indignant saying to what purpose is all this waste for this might have been sold for a good deal and given to the poor jesus perceiving it however said to them why do you trouble the woman seeing that she has acted nobly towards me besides you have the poor always with you but me you have not always for she having poured this perfume upon my body has done it preparatory to my burial i tell you indeed that wherever these glad tidings shall be proclaimed throughout the whole world what she has done will be told as a memorial of her then one of the twelve named judas iscariot having gone to the chief priests asked them what are you willing to give me and i will deliver him to you they accordingly weighed out for him thirty pieces of silver and from that time he sought a fitting opportunity to betray him at the first day of the unfermented bread the disciples came to jesus asking him where do you wish us to make preparation for you to eat the passover go into the city he said to such an one and say to him our teacher says my time is near i wish to observe the passover at your house with my disciples the disciples accordingly did as jesus instructed them and they made ready for the passover when the evening arrived he reclined along with the twelve and while they were eating he said i tell you indeed that one from among you will betray me and they were deeply grieved and each of them began to say i am not the one am i master and in reply he said one who has dipped his hand with me into the basin he will betray me the son of man will indeed depart as it was written about him but woe to that man by means of whom he is betrayed well would it have been for him if he had never been born judas the traitor then answering said it is not i is it master you have said it was his reply then as they were eating jesus took a loaf and having offered a blessing broke it and distributed it to his disciples saying take it eat it this is my body and taking the cup and offering a blessing he gave it to them saying all of you drink of it for this is my blood that of the new settlement which is shed for the removal of many sins 
i tell you however that at present i will not drink of this produce of the vine until that day when i shall drink it with you new in the kingdom of my father then singing a hymn they went out to the mount of olives where jesus said to them all of you will be ashamed of me tonight for it is written i will strike the shepherd and the sheep of his flock will be scattered but after my resurrection i will go before you into galilee peter however replying to him said if all are ashamed of you i will never be ashamed i tell you indeed said jesus in reply to him that in this very night before a bugle sounds you will thrice deny me even if it should be necessary for me to die with you peter declared to him i will never deny you and in this way spoke all the disciples jesus afterwards accompanied them into a garden called gethsemane and said to the disciples sit you here while i go yonder to pray and taking peter and two of the sons of zebedee along with him he began to be distressed and overwhelmed he then said to them my soul is very full of grief even to death stay here and watch with me then going forward a little he fell upon his face praying and said my father if it is possible take this cup from me yet not according to my desire but according to yours then returning to the disciples he found them sleeping and remarked to peter so it seems you are not strong enough to keep awake a single hour with me watch and pray so that you may not fall into temptation your spirit indeed is willing but the body weak again for a second time going away he prayed saying my father if it is not possible for this cup to pass by me without my drinking it let your will be done on returning he found them again asleep for their eyes were heavy so leaving them and going away again he prayed for the third time making use of the self-same words he then came to his disciples and said to them sleep on now to the end and refresh yourselves <laughs> the hour is near when the son of man will be betrayed into the hands of sinners arise let us go forward for my betrayer is now at hand and while he was still speaking judas one of the twelve came along with a great crowd armed with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people now his betrayer had given them a sign saying the man i shall kiss that is he arrest him and at once approaching jesus he said i hope you are well master and fervently kissed him jesus answered him friend against whom have you come then rushing on they seized hold of jesus and arrested him thereupon one of those who were with jesus stretching out his hand drew his sword and struck the officer of the high priest cutting off his ear jesus however said to him return your sword into its place for those who take the sword will fall by means of the sword or do you imagine that i am not able to call upon my father and he would even now provide me with more than twelve armies of angels how then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must come about in this way jesus at the same time addressing the crowd asked have you come out against me with swords and staves to arrest me like a robber day after day i have been sitting teaching you in the temple and you did not arrest me but all this has occurred in order that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled all the disciples then leaving him fled then those who had arrested jesus took him away to caiaphas the high priest where the professors and elders were collected peter also followed at a distance as far as the court of the high priest and entering he sat down along with the officers to see the end now the chief priests and the whole senate sought out false witnesses against jesus so that they might kill him but they could not procure them although many liars came forward at last however two liars came up asserting 
This fellow said, I am able to demolish the temple of God and rebuild it in three days' time. Then the high priest, jumping up and addressing him, exclaimed, Have you no reply? What do these men witness against you? But Jesus kept silent. The high priest thereupon said to him, I put you upon your oath before the God of life, so that you must answer us. Are you the Messiah, the son of that God? You have stated the fact, Jesus made answer. I tell you more. In the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of that power and advancing upon the clouds of the heaven. He blasphemes, exclaimed the high priest as he tore his robes. What need have we of further evidence? Why, now you have heard his blasphemy. What do you decide? He is liable to be put to death, was their reply. They then spat in his face and beat him upon the head, while others struck him with their staves, saying, Tell us, Master Messiah, who are those who assault you? Now Peter was still sitting outside in the court, and a girl coming to him said, Why, you are also with Jesus the Galilean. He denied it, however, before them all, declaring, I do not know what you are talking about. Then, going out into the vestibule, another saw him and said to those there, This fellow was with Jesus the Nazarene. With an oath he again denied it, saying, I know nothing about the man. After a little while, however, the bystanders approached and said to Peter, You are most certainly one of them, for your dialect proves it plainly. He then began to curse and swear, declaring, I do not even know the man! and immediately the bugle sounded. Peter then remembered the words of Jesus addressed to himself. Before a bugle sounds, you will thrice deny me. And rushing out, he wept bitterly. Chapter 27 When the dawn arrived, the chief priests and leaders consulted together against Jesus, so that they might effect his death and having manacled him, they led him away and delivered him over to Pontius Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who betrayed him, saw that he was condemned, he was horrified, and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and leaders, exclaiming, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? was their reply. Look out for yourself. He accordingly flung down the silver in the temple, ran away, and departing, he hanged himself. And the chief priests, picking up the money, said, It is not allowable to add it to the sacred gifts, seeing that it is the price of blood. Then, having consulted respecting it, they bought with it the potter's field for the purpose of burying foreigners. That field has consequently been called the blood field down to the present time. Thus was fulfilled the statement delivered through Zechariah the prophet, which says, And I took the thirty pieces of silver, the amount of the valuation at which I was valued by the children of Israel, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. When Jesus was brought before the governor, the governor questioned him, asking, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so, Jesus made answer. When, however, he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he answered nothing. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many things they charge against you? However, he never offered to say a single word by way of defense, so that the governor was very much surprised. At festival time it was customary for the governor to liberate one prisoner for the people, whomsoever they desired and they had then a notorious prisoner named Barabbas. Pilate, addressing them, therefore, asked, Whom do you wish me to discharge, Barabbas or Jesus, whom they call the Messiah? For he saw clearly that it was merely on account of malice that they had delivered him. And while he was sitting in the court of justice, his own wife sent a message to him, saying, have nothing to do with this just man for i have endured much in a dream this morning on account of him the chief priests and elders however incited the mob to demand barabbas and execute jesus but the governor addressing them asked 
Which of the two shall I set free for you? Barabbas, was their reply. What then, asked Pilate, shall I do with Jesus, whom they call the Messiah? Let him be crucified, was their unanimous reply. Why, he asked, what crime has he committed? In reply, they yelled out more savagely than ever, Let him be crucified! Pilate then, seeing that he gained nothing by it, but on the contrary that the riot increased, took water and washed his hands in the presence of the mob, saying, See, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. Look to it yourselves. Then in reply to him, the whole mass of the people shouted out, let his blood be upon us and upon our children he then discharged barabbas for them and after flogging jesus he delivered him over to be crucified the governor's soldiers then taking jesus into the praetorium mustered all the troops and dressing him up they robed him in a scarlet cloak and plaiting a crown of thorns they placed it upon his head and put a cane in his right hand then kneeling before him they shouted out in ridicule ha long live the king of the jews <laughs> they also spat upon him and taking the cane they struck him with it upon the head then when they had scorned him they took the cloak from off him and clothed him in his own garments and led him away to be crucified when they were going out they met a cyrenian simon by name whom they forced into their service in order that he might carry his cross. On arriving at a place known by the name of Golgotha, which means Skullfield, they offered him sour wine to drink, mixed with gall, but tasting it, he would not drink. Then, having crucified him, they cast lots for the division of his garments among themselves, and sitting down, they kept guard over him there. And over his head they placed his written indictment, thus this is jesus the king of the judeans they also crucified two robbers along with him placing one on the right hand and the other on the left the passers-by also insulted him wagging their heads and calling out you demolisher of the temple and rebuilder of it in three days now save yourself if you can if you are a son of a god come down from the cross in the same way the chief priests with the professors and elders derided him saying he saved others he cannot save himself if he is the king of israel let him come down from the cross and we will believe in him he trusted upon god let him now rescue him if he wants him for he asserted i am a son of god and even the robbers who were crucified along with him reproached him in the same way then from midday until three o'clock in the afternoon darkness spread over all the land and about three o'clock jesus called out with a loud voice exclaiming eloi eloi lama sabachthani that is oh my god my god to what have you forsaken me and some of the bystanders on hearing that remarked he seems to call for elijah and at once one from among them ran and taking a sponge filled it with sour wine and placing it upon a cane gave him a drink but the others called out let him alone let us see whether elijah will come and save him but another taking a spear pierced his side when blood and water came out jesus however having again called out with a loud voice resigned his spirit and then the veil of the temple was torn into two from the top to the bottom while the earth was shaken and the rocks were split the tombs were also opened and many bodies of the saintly sleepers were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection they entered the holy city and were seen by many then the captain and those who were along with him guarding jesus perceiving the earthquake and these other events became dreadfully frightened exclaiming in very truth this was a son of a god and many women who had followed jesus from galilee attending to him were looking on from a distance among these were mary the magdalene and mary the mother of james and joses as well as the mother of the sons of zebedee
when the evening arrived there came from arimathea a rich man named joseph who had himself also been taught by jesus going to pilate he asked for the body of jesus then pilate ordered the body to be given up joseph accordingly taking the corpse wrapped it in a fine linen shroud and placed it in his own new tomb which he had hewn out in the rock and having rolled a large stone to the door of the tomb he went away mary the magdalene and the other mary however kept sitting opposite the tomb now on the morning following the preparation for the festival the chief priests and the pharisees assembled before pilate stating sir we remember that this impostor said when he was alive after three days i shall rise again order therefore the tomb to be secured until the third day for fear his disciples coming should steal him and say to the mob he arose from the dead thus the last imposture will be worse than the first take a guard exclaimed pilate in reply go away secure it as you like they accordingly went and secured the tomb sealing the stone in company with the guard chapter twenty eight after the sabbaths towards the dawn of the day following the sabbaths mary the magdalene and the other mary came to examine the tomb and a violent earthquake was then felt for an angel from the lord descending from heaven approaching the stone rolled it from the door and sat upon it his aspect resembled lightning and his garments were white like snow and in dread of him the guards trembled and became as dead the messenger addressing the women however said you need fear nothing i know that you are looking for jesus the crucified he is not here he has risen just as he told you come look at the place where the lord lay then go quickly tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and at once he will precede you into galilee you will see him there as i have told you in fear mingled with intense delight they accordingly took their departure with all speed from the tomb and ran on to report to the disciples but jesus suddenly met them saying good day to you and they approaching him seized his feet and paid him homage fear not said jesus to them go on and acquaint my friends so that they may return to galilee where they shall see me now while they proceeded some of the guards at the same time going into the city reported all these events to the chief priests they accordingly assembled with the elders and after consultation together they gave the soldiers a large sum of money instructing them to say that his disciples came at night and stole him while we were asleep and if this tale should be heard by the governor we will make it right with him and set you at your ease they accordingly took the money and did as they were directed and that tale is current among the judeans until the present time the eleven disciples however went to galilee to the mountain where jesus had directed them and seeing him they paid him homage but some doubted then jesus approaching them spoke saying every power has been given to me in heaven and upon earth go you out therefore and instruct all the nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit teaching them to observe all that i have commanded you and then i am with you through all time even until the completion of the age amen the end of chapters twenty five through twenty eight and the end of the gospel according to matthew from the new testament in modern english translated by ferrar fenton recording by mark penfold